Hi, this is your host, Samuel Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. We are here at KubeCon in Detroit, and we have with us once again Morgan McLean, Director of Product Management at Splunk. Morgan, it's great to see you again after it's a long time. Great to see you again as well. Yeah, no, it's been a while, and it's lovely to be at KubeCon again. Right, and last time when we talked about it, it was the merger of two projects around, you know, open telemetry, census sense and, and open of, tracing. Yeah, yeah open so telemetry. yeah, and uh, the whole op open telemetry came yeah. out. I want to talk a bit about when we talked last time and then we are here today, how you have seen the evolution of uh, you know, observability space, how much awareness is there, yeah. how much people are like coming to you and asking, hey, what solutions you have versus yes. you are going to people and say, hey, you need to have observability yeah. strategy. It's going to be a long answer, but the changes are quite dramatic, right? Like there's, there's you mentioned, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen each other in, in, in a while since, since uh, KubeCon, I think in Barcelona. Um, and my memories of KubeCon back then and similar conferences were that uh, it was mostly booths and talks that were focused on compute and to a lesser extent storage, right? Kubernetes, KubeCon being the, the primary compute mechanism that they were talking about. But that was the main interest of both the people attending these conferences and, and people across the industry as well as the vendors who were, who were attending the conference. That's changed, right? You go downstairs, take a walk amongst all the booths, listen to a lot of the talks. Observability is is the, the sort of the key word, the key free phrase that I see everywhere now at, at uh, KubeCon and as well as across the industry. Um, with that, of course, comes Open Telemetry, the the project that we uh, met uh, during the announcement of, uh, and Open Telemetry itself has also grown substantially. Uh, so in 2018, or 2019, um, we had announced that Open Census, Open Tracing, had merged into a single project called Open Telemetry, and it was just that it was an announcement, really, nothing beyond that. And that was when work commenced on the project. Uh, since then, OpenTelemetry has become the second most active cl uh, cloud native computing foundation project after Kubernetes. We have, I think we announced that we have 800 monthly active developers, like contributors to the project, which is massive, right? Like, like Kubernetes has more, but to be clear, like Kubernetes is a multi-billion dollar compute platform <laughs> used by all the major cloud vendors. Um, and for Open uh, OpenTelemetry to be any sort of 50% like of that, like 40% of that is, is quite incredible uh, to me. Uh, so the project has grown. It's being used in production almost in, in an incredible number of places uh, to, to capture data from their infrastructure, from their applications. Uh, and it's being supported by effectively the entire industry. Like, you know, I work at Splunk. We're a major contributor to the project. Um, but effectively, every company in the observability space and in the cloud computing space is contributing massively to open telemetry, uh, and we're seeing it adopted everywhere now. When we do talk about Kubernetes cloud native adoption, there are, of course, behemoths who are consuming it, but Kubernetes is also powering our toasters, right? That's the yes. joke of the Linux kernel, yes. right? So, so the, 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 the adoption is, you know, so when we do look at the whole bandwidth, yeah. how much adoption are you seeing of, of you know, of yeah. public platforms? You know, of yeah. course, the big players they do know, yeah. but small players they may still be across vendors and providers. The adoption is pretty clear and pretty massive. Um, but probably, I think what you're getting at is the adoption across end users, right? How many people are actually you know using open telemetry to capture like infrastructure metrics, distributed traces, to to really power their observability tooling. Um, of course, we can't. We don't have as a project like core statistics on this. Uh, it's a bit easier, I suppose, for Kubernetes because you typically people are running it on a cloud platform, and so if you talk to Amazon, Google, Microsoft, you can get a pretty clear idea of how successful it is. For us, Open Telemetry provides the agents and SDKs that people deploy into their infrastructure, into their apps. Those don't phone home, obviously. Uh, so we don't. We never have like an exact answer to this. That being said, uh, anecdotally. Um, you know, certainly when I would speak to customers at, at Splunk and, and previously when I was at Google, it, it ran from like 2019 through 2020, late 2020, uh, early 2021, open telemetry was a buzzword. It was a thing that people knew. Um, it was, to be clear, a real project I was working on it, but, but across the industry, the perception would be that it probably was a bit of a buzzword. It's a thing that people had heard of, it's a thing that maybe had some promise, but it wasn't being heavily adopted. Uh, starting last year, we would see some level of adoption, and certainly people would have more faith in it and know that it was real. But to me, the, the change has really accelerated partway through this year, and I mentioned this, I think, in, in Valencia and, and again now. Um, you know, at, at, at Splunk and I'm chatting with the other vendors in the space, um, what we've seen starting the last like, six months to last year is a wave of end users who come in saying, I'm already using open telemetry, right? They have fully bought into the vision, they have deployed it or across all of their services or most of their services, and they're coming to vendors like us and various others and saying, I've bought into your vision, I have open telemetry, it's everywhere. How do I send you my data? Uh, and we're seeing that across not just like cloud native sort of smaller startup firms, 
but major enterprises have also adopted it as well. Um, and it's, I mean, as someone who's been to the project since the beginning, it's obviously very invigorating to see that. That's you know three or four years of work that's gone into this and now it's really being uh, picked up. Uh, but it's also great because those customers and the solutions they're going to use, whether it's vendors like ourselves or others, they can start adopting those like incredibly quickly. Things that would have been like a multi-week, multi-month process to get someone engaged uh, can be done now in literally minutes, if not hours. Right. Once again, excellent. You know, thank you. But let's just you know uh, yeah. zoom out of open telemetry and just look at observability in general. Sure. You, know. uh, yeah. uh, you talk about the awareness is there, the adoption yeah. is growing. But when we look at you know cloud native complexity, you know yes. there is nothing wrong with that. You know Kubernetes was not designed to be you know a button to push and everything is running there. Yeah. Uh, are there any things that kind of hinders the adoption of observability in general, where people yeah. feel some pain point that hey, this is why even if they want, they cannot. Yeah, I think classically in observability, that's being just the agents and SDKs and deploying out those components to your services. Uh, and it was both that they were often challenging to manage, and that still somewhat remains true. Uh, but also, they wouldn't have the capabilities that people wanted. Right? If you wind the clock back to like 2016, which is when I got personally, I got into this industry uh, in a big way, uh, you would look at the solutions on the market, and if you use, say, with certain vendors, Java and .NET, they might have fairly good coverage for you. But then you might have other services written in Python or Go or JavaScript, and those vendors would say, eh, you know, can't help you, sorry. And there might be others that focus more on, say, Ruby or other languages. Uh, but you legitimately wouldn't have coverage for a broad set of technologies that you wanted. Uh, and similarly, you would have some infrastructure, you'd have your applications running on that, you'd be using solutions that would only really target one of those things. And you'd have to use those solutions together, and it generally wouldn't be very effective. right? If you had a challenge, if you had customers calling in and saying, hey, your e-commerce system is throwing errors when I try and check out, you could see that in your sort of old school APM solution. But if it was an infrastructure issue that was causing it, you had to use different tooling to find that, and they didn't talk to each other. That has fundamentally changed, right? You're seeing more and more observability solutions going for this very broad-based approach. Open telemetry enables this for those different solutions because it gives them all the data they need. It's all correlated. It's all in a st sort of standard type with great semantic conventions. And so that has really reduced that barrier of entry. Um, the other barrier that I mentioned first was just like it's difficult to deploy these components, difficult to use them. I think open telemetry also addresses that very well uh, in that it's open source, it's a common standard, a lingua franca that you use across your different applications and infrastructure to talk to these different backends. So in the past, if you were a developer and you used, I, I don't know, I'm picking on, like, like Dynatrace or New Relic or something like five or six years ago, because those were the big options back then. Um, it, they still exist, obviously. Uh, but um, you were using those and you wanted to, say, implement some custom data into one. You'd have to go use your vendor's specific SDKs or agents to do that. And as an end user developer, not a thing you'd always be looking to do. You might not even be familiar with the, that solution. Today, OpenTelemetry has become so ubiquitous that you would just, you know, if you're a Python developer, go like pip install OpenTelemetry, start capturing metrics, start the, your custom metrics, start streaming those wherever you want. And that's a thing that, you know, will be just like muscle memory for you. And so OpenTelemetry and observability, it's so like winding this all the way back to your original question, are they become incredibly easy to access in the last year, last two years. Uh, and I think that's why when you go, again, walk the floor of the co convention here, so many booths, so many companies, so many uh, end users want to learn more or are talking about observability and open telemetry. It's accessible and they need it because they've done things like adopt Kubernetes. They're building these extremely high scale sets of microservices that are powerful and scalable, but difficult to manage. And so they need, they know that they need tooling for this. How does Splunk, you know, differentiate it? I mean, I, it's open source project, but you know, it's yeah. What additional value you are bringing to users where they're like, you know, this is something. So I don't look at it as that, oh, we are differentiating from our competitors by, but you know, we are, I look at it by bringing more value, exactly. additional value. So talk yes. about that. Yeah. And so like speaking specifically for Splunk. So Splunk, most people are probably familiar with Splunk as a company. It it's, has its core product, Splunk Enterprise, which most people just refer to as Splunk, uh, that's been around for I think, 15, 20 years, a, a very long time. It's very po uh, popular and very successful in the IT operation operation space. Um, Splunk also is, I think, fairly well known for security solutions that live on top of that that can tell you things about whether you're being attacked or security holes that you may have in your, your applications or info. Um, what Splunk has started on uh, roughly two years ago, and something I've been a big part of, is Splunk Observability Cloud. So this is a complement to Splunk's existing product line that's aimed very specifically at developers and uh, operators 
Uh, and so it, off it offers a much more opinionated solution than the other Splunk products, which are extremely flexible. So you can use Splunk Observability Cloud to analyze all of your infrastructure, all of your applications, your client applications, to run load tests against all of those. It's extraordinarily powerful. Um, and, and it provides views for things like exploring, say, all of your AWS infrastructure. And it, you know, it knows what EC2 is and can show you dashboards for that. You don't have to create them yourself. Or when you're exploring your applications, it shows a topology map. And critically, because it's based on open telemetry that provides all of this really well-structured, well-formatted data from so many data sources, um, uh, and because it was designed, I think, with open telemetry in mind, we can do things like when you're inspecting a service, we can show you the infrastructure that's backing that service. Or if you're inspecting uh, a particular um, trace from that service, we can show you the logs from that trace or perform even deeper correlations than the ones I just mentioned. Um, we get this data from open telemetry, and I think for us, our, our secret sauce is that we have this single integrated solution. Uh, earlier in this conversation, I mentioned how in the past people often use point solutions, right? You'd have a APM product you're using, an infrastructure monitoring product you're using, things like that, they wouldn't talk to each other. Splunk Observability Cloud brings all of those different types of data together, it provides all of the different uh, inferences and analytics that you need to be successful during development and when things go wrong. Uh, and critically, it also integrates with the existing Splunk product suite. So if you're using Splunk uh, Enterprise, Enterprise Cloud today for log analytics for IT ops use cases, those logs and uh, just appear within Splunk Observability Cloud. And Observability Cloud can also analyze them in new ways uh, and correlate that with your infrastructure and application uh, in, uh, information you're already ingesting there. From the beginning on, we started talking about developers, then DevOps, you know, and the evolution, we are talking about platform engineering uh, engineers now. The whole idea is the ownership, you know, from a, how do you see where does, you know, observability fit into this whole paradigm shift and also if you can talk about you know what is the core problem when we do coin new tax new labels you know which is fine our industry love it right but what is the core problem that how, how you look at it you know there should be not just accountability but ownership where developer has a very holistic view of his application from the time is written all the yes. way to the So talk about that, and then once again, we are yeah. not This is exactly, it's a really, really, really powerful question, so thank you for asking. Um, and it's one that we've talked about within the open telemetry community a lot, and, and certainly myself and my colleagues have discussed pretty regularly. And that's observability tools today, I think, are viewed by developers as uh, the thing you use when things go wrong, right? So like, I work at Splunk, but there's many op other options here. And I think there's a perception amongst customers that you know, if there's an outage, that's when you fire up these tools. And actually, like, it's, it's your outage firefighting tool. Um, I think over time, and you, you talked about like the complexities that people face, over time, these tools are going to be used much, much earlier in the design and development cycle. Uh, earlier in my career, I worked at a company where we were designing extremely high-scale e-commerce systems. And I was one of like four or five people in that organization who understood the architecture of the entire system. Uh, and so half of my day would be drawing out the systems diagram and architecture on whiteboards that represented either the current state of things or the way they would be in a few weeks once we implemented some new features. And that was you know, invigorating to be one of the people who could draw it, but at the same time very inefficient organizationally because your average developer, your senior developer, even your, your developer leads, um, because they lacked that knowledge of the state of the system because they were spending their day actually writing code, um, they would need to pull me into all these conversations, which would slow everything down. I think the industry has even more than then experiencing similar challenges. Because Kubernetes, because these technologies have made it so easy to build all these microservices, no one person in most organizations has any idea how the entire system functions. Uh, and so to have a more practical example, let's say you work on an e-commerce system. You're a you know, senior developer or a tech lead, and you're told, uh, go extend our e-commerce system so we can run uh, discounts for certain customers at certain times, like target discounts. Again, it's a made-up example. It could be something else. Um, you would today need to go find one of those architecture people who knows how everything works. That would slow you down. Right? It's very, very challenging. It takes a lot of everyone's time, and now you need to sort of understand how this works yourself. I think in the future, observability tools will fill this gap, right? Where you, as that developer who's extending this, you open up Splunk Observability Cloud or Dynatrace or what, you know, whatever it is you're actually using, um, and it shows you that information. Right? It shows you how those different services work. It shows you, let's say, when you want to understand how the existing discounting system works across multiple services, it gives you that information yourself. You don't need to rely on one specific person or a set of people to basically whose entire job it is to understand how things work. Everyone now has that knowledge. And so that will make a lot of developers, a lot of operators, much more productive at their jobs 
It allowed them to ship code more quickly, um, which is important, but also allowed them to do it with more confidence and more quality because they have an understanding at all times of how things work. Um, I think there's also places where observability might be applied to like software testing uh, and, and uh, sort of other tasks that people do today. But no, I see these observability tools become ubiquitous. I see them being a thing that developers rely on at least to the same order of magnitude as they do for source repositories and searching through their code, right? Or, or other sort of common tools or debugging, right? Like common tools that people use every day. Um, you know, open telemetry, I think, is at the, 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 at the tip of the spear for this. It's unlocking a lot of these possibilities. Again, walk the floor at KubeCon, you'll see some startups who are actually advertising that they use open telemetry to form developer insights rather than observability tools, um, where they're showing things like errors in code using open telemetry, like live in the code. Um, there's a lot of new things that, that open telemetry is unlocking, where in a few years, developers are going to be relying on this as just as they would with bug tracking, source control, and everything else that they've used in the past. That kind of reminds me of the Linux kernel, you know, when the Linux store was created. He, he did not expect how it will be used, but people yeah. are using it in so many different you know, exactly. ways. So if I talk, ask you, you know, just from the open telemetry perspective, where do you see, I mean, of course, you cannot, it's an open source project, so you can yeah. go and, but, you know, if you can share, you know, what kind of roadmap, what are the things that are yeah. in the pipeline are you working on? Yeah, yeah, we're actually doing a talk on this later today. So open telemetry started with distributed tracing. We shipped that in 2020. Uh, last year, we added metric support for infrastructure and system metrics that can be sent to backends for processing. Right now, we're finishing up our work on logs. Open telemetry has basically two paths for logs. The open telemetry collector, our agent, is being extended to be able to tail logs from existing sources to process those as you would expect for any other logging agent. Uh, secondly, we're also in, in, uh, in creating a new modern logging path um, that will store logs in a strongly typed uh, in memory for a binary format. format. Uh, the benefit of that being uh, logs will now have consistent metadata um, that's enforced by the open telemetry specification. They'll also be processed more quickly, uh, which is really, really important for people who use logs. The performance impact will go from relatively high to negligible of this, which is fantastic. Um, beyond that, there's two really big initiatives that are, that are uh, going to be our focus, I think, later this year and early next year. One is profiling, so adding a new signal type to open telemetry where it can actually analyze the performance of your code. Um, open telemetry today mostly focuses on infrastructure and application topology, you know, how service A talks to service B. Um, this will allow you to see the performance of individual function calls within a specific service. Um, so this is very, very powerful and brings insight down to the next level, which is very exciting. Uh, secondly, we're also extending open telemetry to capture data from client applications. So think of mobile applications on Android and iOS, Windows and Mac applications, front end websites. Uh, and so this will also extend people's visibility from the back end where it is today, right? You use open telemetry and most of these observability tools to see how your services and infra run instead of inside of like AWS or GCP or Azure or your own data center. Once our client telemetry work is done, that gets extended all the way out to application telemetry. So you can do things with all of these together, like say, hey, my customer had a really slow interaction on their phone with my e-commerce system or my, you know, my music sharing website. Uh, and when they tried to share some music in this example, uh, it was extremely slow and it timed out. Well, with the, with the data that open telemetry will bring you once we add these extensions to it, you can see, well, was that an issue within the application? Was it an issue of the application's connection to my backend services? If so, like how long did that transaction take? Show me the network data. Uh, or was that an issue in my backend services? And if it was an issue in either the client or the services with the code profiling functionality, we can actually isolate that down, potentially down to individual function calls in code. It's extremely powerful, the insights it'll provide. Uh, and so I think it's very exciting for developers uh, who are writing you know, code and operating these services because it's going to make their lives a whole lot more manageable and a whole lot easier. Morgan, thank you once again for sitting down with me and talk about open telemetry, observability, Splunk. But we should not make these gaps that long, right? Yes. We should not make the next <laughs> should do this more often. More yes. often, yeah. But I really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much.